Hello again, I'm back. Who are you? Even though I just filmed for a video, I've got something else that I, I want to talk about. Uh, your reason to come. Here's your story, let's begin. The water's fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before your eyes. I've been seeing... Uh, on Facebook on posts and there was a YouTube video with people talking about their reasons to come here and half of the people that come here from North America to live in Ecuador return in the first year or two I think it's half in the first year 70 or 80 percent in the second year and then maybe the the 20 percent they'll actually stay now why is that? It's because there's a lot of people making stupid decisions. It's easy to get caught up in the fantasy. The fantasy of adventure. The fantasy of living in some distant land and living the dream. For you socialist revolutionaries out there, you can come here and relive the world of Che Guevara. <laughs> God help us. You have people that are trying to live this hippie commune lifestyle, vegan, vegetarian, tie-dye, that kind of thing. And they're going to come here and they're going to kind of get the whole food diet and get back to nature and get away from the antibiotics and the fertilizers. And none of that is true. You're not getting away from it here you have it it's just not even regulated so you don't even know about it so <clears throat> another topic you have people come here because they have this dream this idea they're gonna come here they're gonna live like a king they're gonna have maids and servants see my other video or they're gonna buy this is the worst fantasy of all they're gonna come here and buy land and build a house or they're gonna come here and they're gonna buy a house stupid 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 idea you think you're immune to that 50 to 80 percent that are gonna come here and leave these people that came here and left didn't think they were gonna come here and leave they completely bought into and believed their fantasy but the issues that drove them away were so strong that all their investment and commitment and property and all of those things didn't matter. They still jump ship. So, first of all, don't think, well, that's them and this is me and I know better and that you don't know any better. So, do not buy property for at least the first year. Everybody here that I know of, that I see, that's lived here for any period of time, give that very same advice. Now, why do they give that advice? Because that's the good advice. You don't need an albatross around your neck. You don't need to go deep into debt. You don't need to spend your life savings when you don't even know if this is the place for you you think you know you did some research you did you watch my video you don't know I'm telling you I don't care who you are I don't care if you came here and visited for two weeks for four weeks for a month you don't know until you've been here for a year it takes a while when you first come you have that honeymoon stage where everything is great everything's wonderful oh my god you know it's kind of like being in a relationship you don't see the flaws how long is that six months to a year and then reality starts to hit home you realize that your new relationship maybe snores there are issues like anywhere you go you would not consider packing up and moving to Arkansas without going there, without knowing what's going on, and without having family there. One of those things. You wouldn't consider that. You wouldn't just say, 
Honey, grab the kids. Throw everything in the station wagon. We're moving to Arkansas. I, you wouldn't do that. You would, and you wouldn't buy property or buy a house before you even get to Arkansas. And in Arkansas, they at least speak English or some form of English. You're coming to a foreign land. What's that mean? It's foreign. It means things are different. Culture is different. The society is different. It's a different language. And you say, well, I'm going to study and learn Spanish. That's good, and you have to. But I'm going to tell you a dirty little secret. It's not really a secret. But it's important to know. There are some exceptions, but for the most part, you can immerse yourself, you can take classes, you can have a college background, all of this in Spanish. But even if you're here and let's say you're speaking Spanish for two, three years, getting around, buying in the store, things like that, you still cannot and maybe never can sit down and have a nuanced conversation with a native Spanish speaker. There's too much of a disconnect. So it's difficult to make friends. You can make superficial friends, you can make gringo friends, but it's it's going to be limited. It's going to be very constrictive and you're probably not used to that. If you're going to move somewhere, you need to bring a support with you. I met a waitress the other day, she's from Russia. And I said, well, you don't see a lot of Russians here. Well, she does, she's got 14 in her family and they all came here. So they came with a big support group. And uh, that's that definitely is a good way to go. But if you're coming alone, you're coming as a married couple, you need to consider that eventually the beautiful serene scenery and all those things become routine and almost mundane um, what else is going to preoccupy you um, or occupy you what else is going to you know keep your attention and keep your interest and if it's not being close friends with your neighbors you can know your neighbors and you can borrow cups of sugar together and you can do those things but can you really go in and talk about the meaning of life? And not when you don't know the meaning of a lot of words. So that's always going to be an issue. And something else is, and this, this isn't just Ecuador, this is actually most places I've been in the world. And I've told you again and again all the places I've been. Most places are like this. It, in the United States and to a little lesser extent Canada, we are used to a blended society. We don't give it two thoughts. When you go to another country, you're an outsider. You're treated like an outsider. Even when people are polite and people are kind and people are, are giving of themselves, even when they're like that, they're still, I guess you'd say, xenophobic. It's, it's an issue. I, the number one group of immigrants here is uh, Venezuelans. Number two, I believe it was Cubans. We're way down on the, on the food chain as far as the quantity of coming here. You should hear the way locals talk about Venezuelans and Colombians. Colombians, they're all criminals. They're all drug peddlers. Venezuelans. They're only coming here because they're starving there. They're coming here to take our jobs. They're, and, and there's actually a lot of truth to that. But they're, they're coming here and they're taking our jobs and they'll work cheaper. And it's, they're not Ecuadorian. And the gringos, well, if you're retired, you're just coming here to use our medical system because it's been, there's, there is a lot of prejudice in Ecuador. And you need to look, they don't see it as prejudice. They just see it as, because they're all 
everybody here, they're basically they're all Ecuador except for that small immigrant population. It's so unlike the United States. And so it's very easy for them to see things that way. And I'm not even saying they're wrong. But it, it makes you always an outsider. Now, if, if you're from Colombia, how do they know? Because you look the same? Because they have a different accent. And the same with Venezuela. But if you're a gringo, well, you're probably a foot taller. Your skin is much whiter, uh, and, you know, generically speaking. Uh, you just look like a gringo. And so you're always going to be an outsider. You will never be part of the club. There's people here on Facebook, and I, I, I smile to myself because I appreciate their thought, but they're saying, our Ecuador, and, you know, it's like we're, we're part of Ecuador. We are part of Ecuador, but we'll never be integrated to Ecuador. Not because we don't want to be. There's a lot of people that don't. They live in Gringolandia and that kind of thing. It's like Chinatown. We will never be accepted as being as a local. You could live here 20 years. You're always going to be the gringo. So when you're deciding to make that move, you need to think about all of those things. And is that something that you're okay with? Now, me, I am perfectly okay. I could be on a desert island for 10 years and do fine. Um, and I make friends here. I mean, I'm not saying I don't. I have several, I think, very good friends here. But it's a combination between their English and a little bit of Spanish. You know, we kind of can make that work. But strictly speaking, somebody who doesn't speak any English, I don't have any actual friends like that because there's, the communication is just too weak. Outside of the weather and day-to-day -day things, you know, what is there for us to talk about? What would make us friends? They don't need friends. They have lots of friends and family. So, you know, you, you have to bring something to the table for them to decide that they want to be friends. And heaven forbid you don't want, and the good news is in Ecuador there's much less of that in a lot of worlds. You don't want them to see you, oh, it's gringo, it's money, therefore I'm going to feign friendship. There's some of that. They do see gringos as dollar signs. You know, it's like, well, if you're a gringo, that means you've got money. And we know that's not really true, but that's what, even, even people with the kindest of hearts have that thought. The upside is they don't take advantage of it. In a lot of countries, they... You know, they work that. Reasons to come here. Be very careful of your fantasy. Be very careful of the idea of remaking yourself. If you're lonely where you are, you're going to be all the more lonely here. If you're struggling financially where you are, guess what? You're going to struggle financially here. Coming to Ecuador will not change those basic positions you have in life. It won't change it. So choose wisely. It's a good place to come. It's a good place to choose. Just don't do it for the wrong reasons. Don't be one of those people that suffer it out for a year and they go home miserable. Um, just make your decision before you get here and then you, you invest so much in it. So that's all I got to say on that. You know you could